Why do we sabotage love? The saying goes, love is grand. So it seems strange that many of us set out to sabotage it. As it stands, there is a distinct lack of knowledge to explain why some people, having successfully initiated a relationship, embark upon what appears to be a path to destruction. They meet that great person, then they find faults, become untrusting, and assume the relationship will end without much evidence. People seem to pull the plug on a relationship too quickly. As things become serious or difficult, no matter how perfect their potential partner might be. Is this you? Or maybe someone you know? Perhaps it's the person sitting right next to you. Well, I suspect there are a lot of people out there who are or have been a romantic self-saboteur. And that is why I have decided to pursue a PhD on this very topic. So yes. That is a bit of a journey. To understand self-sabotage in romantic relationships, I have conducted two studies. In the first study, I interviewed psychologists from all over Australia who specialize in romantic relationships. I really wanted to understand what self-sabotage looks like in practice. After months of interviews, I came to one conclusion people do tend to behave in similar ways or patterns as they move from one relationship to the next. In the second study, I wanted to understand how people in relationships behaved and why. So to that end, I surveyed over 600 people from all over the globe. My participants varied in age, cultural background and sexual orientation but yet they answered in very similar ways. So from those interviews and surveys, I have compiled a list of behaviors which are very destructive in a relationship. Four of these behaviors stood out as they have been previously identified by a well-known psychologist and researcher, John Gottman. These are criticism, defensiveness, contempt and stonewalling. He calls this the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How fitting. So this might tell you how someone might sabotage a relationship. As to the why, it seems that people sabotage relationships for one main reason, to protect themselves. That makes sense. That is a valid way to be. So there you have it. You now know what sabotage looks like in relationships, how it might be done, and why. But hold on, things are never that simple. I suspect there is a lot more to why people sabotage love. So what I'd like to do today is to walk you through some of the responses from people in my study. When asked to explain why they can't maintain successful long-term relationship, this is what my participants have said. Take this one, female participant, age 25. I'm always afraid it's not going to work, or I'm going to get hurt. Another example, this male participant, age 41. I have a fear of getting hurt by being the one broken up with. Now, we know that people who are motivated to self-protect tend to have difficulties with self-esteem. Self-esteem is how we perceive ourselves and our own self-worth. But this concept is highly validated by social interactions. Let me show you another example. This female participant, age 34. I avoid people who like me. I think there is something wrong with them. <laughs> people with self-esteem difficulties will self-sabotage because they experience threat. Again, they do it to protect themselves. So overall, self-saboteurs hold insecure views of themselves, others, and relationships. 
And this is usually due to having had difficult relationships in the past growing up, say with their parents, peers, or romantic partners. This is really tough to escape. And for self-saboteurs, this is even harder. I have another example. Male participant, age 35. My high expectations of people holds me back from maintaining a successful relationship. Now, let me tell you, the way people choose to self-sabotage will be uniquely tailored by their past experiences. But no matter how unique, their journey is often met with a twist of fate. People who regularly self-sabotage will find it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So they tell themselves they cannot do a task. Their claims will translate their performance into real outcomes. It's like staring into a crystal ball, knowing exactly what's going to happen. I have more examples. Female participant, age 25. I put myself in relationships which are doomed to fail from the start, as I have a fear of being abandoned. Another female participant, age 25. I know that me trying to maintain a distance like that is one of the reasons my relationships always fail. I have countless examples just like this. But one of them is actually standing right in front of you. Hello, my name is Raquel. I am a recovering romantic self-saboteur. This is a photo of me in my hometown, Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil. Before meeting my husband, I found myself in a pattern of self-sabotage. After years of studying psychology and researching, I now know that it could be because I was abandoned at birth and left for dead at a public hospital. I spent months at the hospital because I was premature and very, very sick. But later, I was actually adopted by the nurse who took care of me and her husband, an Air Force surgeon. So I'm really lucky and I have amazing parents. But this early life experience shaped me. I assume that people in a relationship with me will eventually leave me. I also assume that all my relationships will fail without much evidence. Consequently, I am often thinking how best to protect myself. And I count on the four horsemen of the apocalypse to do the job with criticism, defensiveness, contempt, and stonewalling. Just ask my husband. <laughs> but let me tell you, it doesn't work. If I have not been able to convince you of the irony of self-sabotage just yet, let me try one more time. We do what we do to protect ourselves, but we get hurt anyway. Maybe in a less public or obvious way, but we get hurt nevertheless. This whole dynamic is like living inside a Sam Smith song. Too good at goodbyes. I am never going to let you close to me, even though you mean the most to me, because every time I open up, it hurts. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> that was me in relationships. But the way out of this cycle is to actually find safety in the person that you love. We need a safe haven to go to, so we don't have to protect ourselves. I now have that with my husband. Let me show you some photos, I just couldn't resist. Isn't he gorgeous? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so a lot of people come to me and ask, how did th things change for you? What happened? I have been conducting research into what works to maintain long-term relationships. So I have combined what I have learned into three tips for you. But before I tell you, let me just say, we should not be pursuing every relationship that comes our way. I would like to tell you to pursue those relationships that have the potential to work. They are good. And what's standing in your way is your self-sabotage tendencies. So for those, tip number one, insight. Take a really good look at yourself and your behaviors in relationships. Ask yourself, are you someone who needs a lot of reassurance from your partner? 
Are you someone who gets nervous when things get too close? Are you someone who counts on the four horsemen of the apocalypse to protect you? If yes, you could be a romantic self-saboteur. But please don't shoot the messenger. I know these are very uncomfortable questions. I just need you to think about it. I have told you my reasons for wanting to protect myself. What are yours? Tip number two, expectation. Think about your expectations of your romantic partners. Do you expect they should know what you are thinking or want all the time? Do you get frustrated when they're not living up to your expectations or standards? Are your expectations even realistic? And tip number three, collaboration. We need to figure out how to collaborate with our partners and how even to be vulnerable together. Are you and your partner in the same team? Do you talk to your partner about your relationship goals? Do you see you and your partner together long term? Now, those tips are not an overnight solution or a one-size-fits-all solution. So it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of patience, believe me. And there might be a lot more than you need to implement than just these three tips. But this is a good start, OK? Because after all, a lot of what I have talked about here today is nothing new. What it is new is turning the lens on yourselves and starting to figure out what you can do to maintain long-term and healthy relationships. Change is really hard, but not impossible. I have been on this journey now for eight years, eight months, two weeks, and three days. <laughs> so if you are someone who needs to break the pattern of self-sabotage, please be kind on yourselves. It's natural to want to protect yourself, but the way out of it is to have insight into who you are in a relationship, your expectations of your romantic partners, and how best to collaborate with them. Because after all, if you know who you are in a relationship, your partner will also have a chance to get to know you. And together, you can break the pattern of sabotage. Let me finish by saying this. Love will never be easy. But without self-sabotage, it is a lot more reachable, believe me. Thank you. Thank you.